Good evening, everyone. This is Dr. Palacios, and I am here to talk to you about heart disease. So I'm going to be making uh, five series videos on heart disease, what to know about it, what's the disease, how to diagnose it, and like what are some treatments from the medical world and also from my specialty, naturopathic medicine. So for today, I'm actually just going to be making a quick presentation about what is heart disease also known as cardiovascular disease, some facts, some ideology, like where does it come from? And you know, what should you be careful about? So without further ado, let's get started. But I wanna mention also one thing that everything that I am saying here is only for educational purposes. This is not intended to diagnose or treat any kind of heart disease if you're watching out there. So with that being said, let's get started. So heart disease today is something that we see a lot. It is actually the number one killer in the world, not just the United States. And there are actually a lot of reasons as to why that is, which we'll touch upon as we go on. Uh, also, there's one in four people in the US that die of heart disease. So as a doctor yourself, you're gonna see a lot of people who have some sort of heart disease presenting and you know you go outside think about it one in four of those people that you're seeing most likely have some sort of heart disease and then another thing that you should be careful and this is mostly targeted to women is that when there is a cardiovascular infection not infection but infarction which means a heart attack the year after uh, women actually have the higher chance of dying during that that time frame of one year whereas males also have the high a high risk but it's not as high as females so with that being said that now I want to mention what is heart disease what is it that you know what's the definition where does it come from so the definition of heart disease is actually a group heart disease is like an um, it's like a main category of many different umbrellas many different sections or different groups of diseases that affect the the organ the heart organ and you know if you can remember the heart goes on your left side more around here it's about the size of your fist and it's a pump so that means it's also a muscle it's a specialized muscle it's not like a muscle of your arm or your hand where you can voluntarily move it it's actually a voluntary, it's an involuntary pump that's constantly working to pump blood to the rest of your body. So you get blood and the blood means nutrients, oxygen, and then other, um, other type of nourishment to the tissues. So this organ is what we're talking about for this section. So some, some diseases that are falling to this are the first one, high blood pressure or hypertension. And that means that your numbers, you know, it tends to be higher than 130 over 80, 80, 85. Now the guidelines are a little bit lower because they want you to be taking more preventative measures to prevent more heart disease. Uh, so hypertension is one, arrhythmias, so that's when uh, the heart pump is not working as well instead of pumping like consistently it actually starts fluttering so it doesn't pump as well and when the heart doesn't pump well then the blood is gonna get coagulated and it's and it's actually very high risk of having clots and clots can eventually lead to stroke some kind of problem in your tissues uh, the, the another type of heart disease is congestive heart failure and that's when typically is when the heart pump system is failing so the heart is not working as well and it gets congested so it gets filled with fluid and whatever fluid or blood comes to the heart the heart is too weak to pump it out and then the last one which is also a very important one is ischemic heart disease another name is coronary artery disease and that actually goes together with something else called atherosclerosis. So atherosclerosis is like the plaque 
the buildup that goes in the artery that feeds, that travels, where blood travels through so it can get oxygen to the tissues. So with coronary artery disease or ischemic heart disease, the heart you know, also has vessels by itself around it to get the oxygen. But with this type of problem, atherosclerosis, there's actually a little buildup plaque so the oxygen and the blood doesn't get through it. So the muscle tissue doesn't get enough oxygen and that's eventually that, that actually starts killing the muscle cells it, or known as myocytes. So again, that's very important because the heart is constantly working. If you think about it, like if you're working out, you know, doing your, um, doing the lifts, after doing a couple times, your muscles get tense, they get build up of lactic acid and you can rest to kind of, you know, repair that. But with the heart, it's a little bit different because the heart doesn't have that break. It doesn't have a break. We can't just say to the heart, okay, take a break. We'll be back. It doesn't happen like that. So it needs constant oxygen, constant oxygenation all the time. And any, and just a couple minutes of that being cut off is going to cause a lot of issues. And that's what cardiac heart disease or heart attack is. When that blood flow gets cut and then one starts experiencing the myocytes or the cardiac cells dying. So that's what heart disease is. Um, I hope it makes a little bit more sense. Uh, and then the last thing I want to mention is more of the causes. So what's the etiology? Where does it come from? Or what is the risk of getting heart disease? So here's a few. There's a lot of reasons. There's a lot of causes. But I want to mention the, the major ones, which kind of all go together. So pay, pay close attention because this actually makes a lot of sense. First one, diabetes. And the reason is, is because when diabetes has a measurement test called hemoglobin A1C, that's a measurement of the glyca glycation products of the red blood cells, which basically measures how much sugar there is in the blood in like a period of 90 days or so. What happens with that is that number actually correlates to the risk of having heart disease. So the higher the number, the more di the more severe your diabetes is, and it's also the more severe your heart disease is. So that is the direct correlation between diabetes and uh, heart disease. Also, overweight, obesity, and poor diet are things that are gonna cause the heart disease, and this actually comes from the condition called hyperlipidemia, which means hyper from high and lipidemia from uh, lipids or fats in the blood, emia. So it means you have a lot of lipids, you have a lot of fats circulating in your system that's causing damage to the vasculars, uh, to the vessels, and that itself is going to start making a plaque which eventually can become atherosclerosis. Uh, LDL is what commonly is known as to be that damaging cholesterol that most people try to prevent. Uh, but again, we'll be speaking about how to reduce LDL naturally, what are things that can help, raise the other one, which is the HDL. But, and again, I also want to mention that LDL and HDL is not the full story. There's a lot more to that because that in itself can also expand into other types of markers into your blood test about cholesterol intake. But anyway, the poor diet aspect, you know, eating a lot of junk food, uh, having not enough foods that are low in nutrients. So frying your broccoli is you're not going to get the nutrients that the broccoli provides if you just steam it, for example. Uh, so again, cooking is very important. Uh, also sedentary lifestyle. You know, the less you do, the more likely you are to have heart disease in respect to low physical exercise, but also like working in an office. Like if you work in an office where you're sitting all day, you know, your risks of having heart disease are very high. And it actually, it's surprising that after 50 years, you know, the revolution between working more industrially to more office work, you know, the incidences of heart disease just keep increasing. So it's something to think about. 
Then the two obvious ones that we see a lot is called uh, excess alcohol, so drinking a lot of alcohol also. I mean, alcohol in general is too much of it becomes a poison, so it starts affecting the heart. And again, that all because alcohol also depletes nutrients that are necessary for your body to work well. And smoking, so cigarettes. Tobacco, to some extent it does because of the nicotine, but the cigarettes are the ones that you have to be more careful because they're not they're not just full of tobacco but they also have like 2,000 other chemicals that are just harming to you one of them including heavy metals and you know one of the heavy metals called cadmium can actually give high blood pressure known as essential high blood essential hypertension so I think that, oh, and then another thing that can also cause heart disease is, you know, in populations who are more in the elderly, you know, kidney disease. People who have failing kidneys are gonna have direct problems with their heart because the kidneys regulates and it cleans the blood. So it filtrates it. But when the kidney starts failing, blood pressure regulations are gonna start decaying. The heart is not gonna be able to keep up with the, with the, amount of blood that is being pumped with so you know it's it's very it's very important also to take care of your kidneys if you're like trying to prevent heart disease so I hope this helped I hope this you know gave you some kind of understanding to what heart disease is and again for today's topic it's only about what is that what are some causes what is where does it come from what's what is a heart disease and you know again only for information purposes and i hope this educated you a little bit more so thank you so much and i'll see you next time for more